Hi there guys, Neil at Italia Autos here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. And as you saw this morning when I put the video up, I am now selling my Jeep after seven long years of ownership. It's been a blissful time with the Jeep, but it's time to let it go. So this video is about what I'm gonna replace it with. I'm quite limited on the type of vehicles I can have because I want it to be a family vehicle and I also want it to be able to tow up to three and a half ton. Now there aren't many nice cars out there that can tow that. So today I'm just gonna be discussing what options there are uh, what I'm going to probably want, what I don't want, and what I'm going to consider. So the first option to discuss is should I get another van? Um, we're talking probably eight years ago, I had a Vivero and I kept that for nearly five years. It was a bright green machine and I'll see if I can find some pictures of it and I'll stick a uh, picture up now for you. And um, that was a you know nice vehicle to have, it was all right to drive around in, but it was a little bit underpowered. And at the end of the day, you drove like a van. So. I could have a look at the new Transit, but you're talking 40 grand for a specced up Transit van now. I mean, I remember years ago when you wanted to buy a van, they were always like 20 grand for a van and it was just a basic bog standard van and now they're like stupid money and um, come with a lot more kit, which for a van, a lot of people probably won't need, but they're making them more like cars now, I suppose. So the van is a possibility. Next option is to buy a pickup truck. That will technically save me a little bit of money on uh, business expenses because it's a truck at the end of the day, but I do believe they are now taking away the um, the VAT level thing, whatever they do on pickup trucks now. So five seater pickup trucks don't qualify for certain tax breaks anymore. So um, I wouldn't get that on it, but I did test drive uh, a Vivero, no, a Vivero van, but not the van, the, um, the pickup truck, the L200 type one. And, um, it drove like a tractor. It was very rough. The automatic gearbox was only a five-speed gearbox. You're just like, we're in 2024 now, and it's really, really that basic and didn't drive very nice at all. I also drove the um, the Fiat Fullback a good few years ago. This is probably seven years ago when I had the Jeep. The Jeep had to go in to have something um, done under warranty, and um, I had one of those for a weekend, and oh my God, was it horrible. Um, I mean, if you needed to drive around building sites and stuff like that, but towing up and down the motorway and wanting comfort driving, they're not very comfortable to drive. So I think start right now by writing off pickup trucks because I don't like them and they're not very comfortable than the ones I've drove and looked at. So on to the next one. So the next option I can think of is a Volvo XC90. They are only petrol now. So when you come into towing, they're not gonna be very economical. And they, but on the plus side, they do have like a 30 kilowatt battery in them now. So you can get up to like 50, 60 miles on battery power. So that means it will save me loads of money driving to and from work. Uh, another slight issue would be, we've already got the electric born that the wife has, and she needs to charge that every night pretty much for her job. Uh, so me having access to that charger at the cheaper rates you get with like Octopus Energy. You, when you've got an electric car, you, you're all after the cheap rates now. And, um, having space to charge it overnight would mean I'd have to get up in the middle of the night, swap cars over, and yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. Um, but yeah, the Volvos are nice, not driven one. So it is something to consider. And the next one would be a Mercedes-Benz GLE. They do several different engines, up to like a GLE 400 is the one which tempts me because it's got the most power. It's got a pretty reasonable 0 to 60 time. I have driven the GLE 350E, which is like the mild hybrid, well, not the mild hybrid, but you've got a battery power for like 30 miles. And um, they were quite good. Um, drove really nice, really like luxurious to drive and really comfy to sit in. But the big hang up was that you can't actually spec a heated steering wheel. And I'm like, on what is essentially an 80,000 pound car, you couldn't have a heated steering wheel and that is one of the big hang-ups, my necessities that I need. I want a sunroof and I want to be able to open it and I want a heated steering wheel and I want heated seats. That's the three stipulations I need. Oh, and you need to tow, tow as well, tow well. And um, so really the GLE, I would have to compromise on one of my big issues. I want a heated steering wheel to have one of those. So um, yeah, we'll have to check that because obviously the used prices are quite good on them now. Next vehicle is the Land Rover 90 or Land Rover 110. I quite like the, the rugged look of the exterior of them. They've got pretty powerful engines, 300 horsepower on the, um, 
on the one spec, but they'll also do a 200 and a 250. I think the 200 will be too underpowered. Um, the 250, would, but the 300's really nice, but they are really expensive. So that's on my shortlist as well. And the 110 is just the, the bigger version of the 90. Um, yeah, I've had a look inside them. Really nice. Spec one up, new one on the internet. And you're like, oh, yeah, God, they're expensive. Um, by the time you tick up some options, and I think the tow bar pack was like three and a half thousand pounds. And you're like, geez, that's very expensive. And used, they're still commanding a pretty um, premium on, um, on used as well. And a lot of you will say, oh, well, the reliability and all oh, the uh, insurance costs. But I have done a bit of research. And uh, the reliability, yes, it could be a little bit of an issue. But come on, guys. Everybody says Alpha and my are unreliable. And there's so many people out there saying, oh, no, mine's been perfect. So all cars have their problems. So, so whatever comes with the car with them being unreliable, you've got to take it with a bit of cheese, really. It's, uh, you can't do it until you own one yourself. So I'm not going to be hung up on that. And the second problem with Land Rover is insurance and them being stolen. Pretty much everything after 2022 isn't actually that bad to insure. Yes, it does carry a premium over everything else, but it's still affordable and it's not um, the 16 to 20,000 pounds price bracket that people were getting quoted in the center of London. And I, I have read that Land Rover doing a recall on the cars from 2018 to 2021 um, and upgrading the security in them so people can't nick them in three seconds anymore. So none of that concerns me. So they are a possibility. Um, the next one is BMW X5. Um, we had a BMW 330 diesel on a 2014 15 plate, I think it was a few years ago. Um, loved that, drove really nice, super fast, very reliable. Um, no downsides to it other than I found trying to get one in the right spec is quite hard, like an M Sport one with the correct toys on it and with a heathy steering wheel. Heathy steering wheel on them seems to be quite a rare option for some reason. So there's only a select few around there with um, the heathy steering wheel and a tow bar on in, in this sort of the used category. Um, the new ones have come out now, but lovely as they are, they're way at my price range. They're very, very expensive. Um, so that is one I'm gonna have to shortlist and go and drive. Um, what else is there? Oh yeah, the um, Land Rover Discovery. I have liked those. I test drove one of those two years ago and um, kind of fell in love with it then, drove really, really nice. Um, and then sort of the, the COVID bits hit and um, you couldn't get them for love nor money and the prices were really expensive. And um, what I liked about the Discoveries were they had a ton of kit on them. They look really nice. They drove amazingly, uh, economical and um, pretty quick as well. So that is my short list of the cars I will consider. If I forgot anything, let me know. Um, I did watch a review on um, Car Wow, the Ineos Grenada, and um, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. That's a bit too uh, hardcore for before, and um, I'm not really after that. I want something comfort, luxurious, something I can enjoy to drive that isn't slow, but reasonably quick when you need it and the main important thing is it needs to be able to tow and tow well and carry my family around with me safely so if you have any more ideas let me know in the comments below and um thank you for watching and i shall see you in the next video